football has quasi religious status in Brazil, and becoming a professional player is every Brazilian boy's dream. But prejudice within the game and wider Brazilian society means that, far from that dream is cut short. When Douglas Brogan arrived in Rio de Janeiro at the age of 12, he was filled with excitement. I had a lot of hope, he says. I came here with a dream. I was ready to fight for it. He had been scouted by third division model Rare, and after six years in the youth teams there, Douglas' dream started to become a reality. At 18, he was signed by Botafogo, one of Real's top clubs, which had recently won the Brazilian league. But something else was happening to Douglas at the same time. I started discovering my sexuality. He says, I started seeing that I had desires and that it was for men. As his career progressed, training with players who would go on to play for Brazil and making appearances for the first team, Douglas realized he could not carry on playing football and be an out gay man. It was a choice that either you are yourself or you are a footballer. It just was not possible to be both. At 21, he quit football. It was the toughest decision of his life. That day that I decided not to play, I cried so much. He remembers. I walked around for hours crying. For all the flamboyance of its annual carnival, Brazil is a deeply homophobic country, particularly when it comes to football. The people will speak to tell us what seems obvious of course there are gay men playing professional football in Brazil, but no top-level player has ever come out. Listen to the chants at a football match, or talk to the fans here, and it is not hard to see why. One of the most common chants directed at opposing players is Fialdo, which translates as faggot. At a home game of the table topping, Sao Paulo team Palmeiras, supporters tell us there is not really space for gay men to play professional football in Brazil, and that the supporters would not want to watch gay guys playing. One fan, wearing the branded vest of the Palmeiras supporters club, says there is no chance a gay man could ever play for his team. Football is a martial sport. It's a place for men. During the recent presidential election campaign in Brazil, some other Palmeiras fans were filmed on a mobile phone in the Sao Paulo metro station chanting, Look out, queers. Bolsonaro's going to kill the faggots. Jair Bolsonaro, who was elected president last year and took office on 1 January, has described himself as a proud homophobe, and said that if he saw to men kissing he would physically attack them. Watch, far things about breading as new president. According to one Brazilian human rights group, 387 LGBT Brazilians were murdered in trans and homophobic attacks in 2017 a significant increase on the previous year. Despite this hostile atmosphere, Douglas is part of a group of men fighting back against homophobic prejudice in Brazilian football and the wider society. Fifteen years after that gut-wrenching decision to leave football behind, he is back on the pitch, playing for a gay amateur team, called B. Scats, his teammate. And Roy Machado founded Biscuits so LGBT footballers could come together to play in Real. It was such a success. He helped other gay teams to farm around the country, and then, just over a year ago, started an LGBT tournament called the Champions League. The league is made for us to play soccer, and Roy says.
We want to play soccer in a safe place. The third Champions League held in Sao Paulo is the biggest yet. There is a loud, colorful party atmosphere, and the football is of a high standard. These cats get knocked out in the quarterfinals, and the Douglas is frustrated they did not do better. But deeper down, there is a bigger disappointment that his dream of being a pro was cut short. It hurts seeing my friends from back. They are still playing as professionals. He says it really does still hurt today in the hostile landscape in which gay Brazilians now find themselves. The prospects for the Douglases of the future look uncertain at best. But despite the election of a new homophobic president, the tournament's founder and the world. Is defined now. I am so sad with Bolsonaro, he says. But I think the resistance will grow a lot in the next few years. Is the Champions League a part of the resistance? Totally. I think we have in this two days, maybe one zero 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 people here, and I think in the other Champions League we will be more and more. People who want to be a part of this, find out more. Listen to David Baker's report. The Brazilian footballer who never was on. Listen to David Baker's report. The Brazilian footballer who never was on crossing continents on BBC Radio Four. If you are in the United Kingdom, are on assignment on BBC World Service. The United States military says it has killed 62 fighters from the Islamist group Al-Shabaab in six air strikes in Somalia. A four air strikes on Saturday killed 32 militants, and a further two on Sunday killed 28. It said in a statement, "This was the deadliest air attacks in Somalia since November 2017, when." The United States said it had killed 100 militants. Somalia has seen a sharp increase in the number of air strikes and casualties since President Donald Trump took office in the United States in January 2017. A tally by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism reveals that at At least 400 people have been killed in air strikes since the beginning of 2017, far more than the previous 10 years combined. The latest strikes bring to at least 40 the number carried out in Somalia so far this year, compared with 35 recorded in 2017. The United States has a huge military base in neighboring Djibouti, from where it launches attacks on the militants. Mr. Trump gave the United States military greater authority in March 2017 to attack militants in Somalia. Traditionally, United States presidents have been wary of intervening in Somalia since it is special. Forces soldiers died fighting militias in the capital Mogadishu in 1993. A battle dramatized in the film Black Hawk Down. No civilians were killed in the latest air strikes, which were carried out in coordination with the Somali government. The United States military said, alongside our Somali and international partners. We are committed to preventing Al Shabaab from taking advantage of safe havens from which they can build capacity and attack the people of Somalia. The United States Africa Command said Al Shabaab, which is linked to Al Qaeda, has not yet commented on the latest strikes. Somalia-based security think tank the High Royal Institute said in a Report published in November that Al Shabaab had been forced to change tactics following the upsurge in airstrikes.
The institute said the group was now conducting fewer muscle attacks on military bases, but attacks on government offices and businesses which refused to pay its taxes had increased markedly. The United States State Department, in its most recent report on terrorism, described Somali as a terrorist safe haven and said it should have remained a threat. Despite suffering setbacks, the group retained the control over large parts of the country and the ability to carry out high-profile attacks using full-side bombers.